Folks, I'm sure you've seen this on, on Twitter or X, as they call it now. A lot of Republicans are pointing at the the betting market, poly market, right? Where you can bet on just about everything, the weather, you know, time of day. God, I don't know. And one of the things, of course, you can bet on is the American election. Well, a lot of the Republicans out there are telling that is, yeah, look at this. You know, it, it shows that Donald Trump is going to win the race. You know, I think the odds are something like 40 percent for Kamala versus 60 percent for Donald Trump. Look at this. Look at this. He's going to win. He's going to win. I think even Trump is tweeting this out. Well, folks, the stark reality of that is that it's all foreigners. Have a listen to this. So this is Joe Scarborough and Mark Cuban. Other than a small play, other than a small one, Cashy, they just passed no, but on poly market. On poly market, yeah, yeah. There's have to all be foreigners. Poor. All foreigners. Whoa. So this is this is like Republicans are excited. Say we don't care about the polls or the only vo early voting numbers. Look at what the foreigners are saying. <laughs> <laughs> Putin's amazing. Sad. Putin's but that's that's the reality of it, folks. I mean, that's how desperate they are. And there's this notion out there that we've seen Donald Trump. His his stamina is not quite what it should be. The other day, he just he was going to take more questions at a town hall in Pennsylvania. And he said, well, instead, let's just play some music. So for 30 minutes, they played music. And he ended an interview on a podcast yesterday abruptly just because he's tired, exhausted. So we got a guy that's 78, almost an octogenarian. So what's going on here? So Donald Trump obviously wants to be president. I'm not debating that. But the conservatives are using Donald Trump as sort of like a Trojan horse to get him through. Donald Trump wants to run so he can, he can exonerate himself for everything that he's done in any way that he can do it, right? All of these cases against him, that's why he's in the race. The conservatives have got an agenda that only J.D. Vance can push forward. I mean, Donald Trump, for example, even on abortion, his wife is saying that it should be allowed, right? They, they know that Donald Trump isn't as conservatively strong as J.D. Vance. So it's a Trojan horse situation, folks. And they talked about this last night on CNN. I just want to play this clip. Um, I saw this and I thought it's pretty relevant to what's happening here. I'm, I'm tired and I'm not running for president. I don't have to be the president after. I think we have to understand that like what Abby said is true. You know, he doesn't have enough battery to make it to election day. Does he have, he doesn't currently have enough battery to make it through an entire speech. He stood on stage this week yes. for 40 minutes listening to his own playlist. And we need to talk about how that's not normal. And I think we also need to talk about the fact that when are we going to pretend, stop pretending that this is the real candidate? We're just trying to get him across the finish line. And then mm -hmm. to your point, we're right. going to put in President J.D. Vance because there is no way that this man who can't make it through an entire speech, who keeps canceling things, is going to be the person that does four more years, right? There's no way. We have to get really serious about... No, and what you'll see, folks, if, God forbid, if Donald Trump does get elected, he's going to be hanging out at Mar-a-Lago. He's not going to care... He's going to continue on like he does today. It's not even going to be like he's living in the White House. It's going to be all J.D. Vance. John, Donald Trump is just going to be working on the cases that are relevant to him and his personal interest. J.D. Vance is going to be the president. And that's a problem because obviously most of America does not want J.D. Vance. He polls lower than Charlie Brown, you know, for president or for VP even, you know, in that in that respect. So, folks, we've got a tranche of information that just came out. Adam Cochran has released a good analysis. I just want to go through through this real quick with you and just kind of illustrate the information that was released from Judge Chutkin. And this is all about how Donald Trump was trying to subvert the election and what he did. And he goes on to say, so the first three volumes of Smith's evidence against Trump are released, about 70% still sealed, but pretty damning stuff, which is all either in their own messages or testimony from Republican staff under oath. He says a member of Trump's team directly attempted to get a Pence aide to hand Mike Pence documents their team knew was fake, uncertified, and lacked a chain of custody. So... They're coming up with a plan already to try to push the pressure campaign against Mike Pence, to hand Mike Pence documents that they knew were fake and uncertified. And then they've got iMessages confirming that they were trying to deliver the unsealed fake documents to Mike Pence. And you can see them right here. And again, this is Adam Cochran on Twitter or X, if you want to check it out, I'd recommend it. 
They also have emails confirming this was planned in advance and that they wanted Chuck Grassley, good old Chuck Grassley, right? The old hayseed from Iowa. Well, sure, I'll do that. If to stand in, if Mike Pence said he was going to recuse himself, Chuck Grassley, come on down. Yep. He'd do it for sure. And then this is interesting too, folks, and their own war game scenarios. They concede that if the election is processed fairly, that Biden would win. I mean, that's kind of scary. <laughs> so it, it's really the whole attempt here was to subvert and rig and change the outcome. They concede that if the election was processed like it should be, Biden would win. The sixth point that he makes, they had a memorandum prepared on this matter as far back as November 18th, which is one month before any of the alternative electors had made their claims proving that it was premeditated. Yeah. They probably probably were working on this the day after the election, but this is the earliest record that we have, November 18th of 2020, that they were working on this matter to subvert and steal the election. They knew well in advance and admitted testimony and email that the VP did not have the power to do this and that the Supreme Court would not hold up this case, proving they knew it was illegal. Although they kind of thought that Clarence Thomas would probably come out and side with them, but they knew it was wrong right out of the gate. They knew that what they were trying to do to steal the election away from Biden was wrong. Point number eight. Trump called the Michigan Speaker on an unofficial line marked Spam Risk Egypt to discuss fraud allegations, proving that he tried to cover his tracks, and these were not protected official acts, right? These were not protected official acts, which Donald Trump would get immunity for. He was using a burner phone to call the Michigan House Speaker and was telling him, that it's going to come through as spam risk Egypt on your phone when I call you. Trying to, I mean, basically proving that Donald Trump was covering his tracks. Point number nine. At the time, Trump did not even feel they had grounds to file a lawsuit in Michigan. And you can see that here. Point number 10. They're talking about the fake electorate packages that Trump's team had tried to hand over to Pence. They use the exact same boilerplate template across all the states. These pages, Adam says here, do not normally have a standard across all states showing coordination, but the source proof is still under seal. So he goes on to say here, and it's a litany of things, they knew that they lost the election. They knew that it was not legal for Pence to overturn. They knew that the states did not have any fraud issues in their election. They researched the alternative electors a month in advance. They knew the documents were unofficial. They took part in the transfer process. Folks, it was just a big sham that Donald Trump was running, trying to steal the election away from Joe Biden. Um, incredibly, incredibly sad stuff here that, you know, we're still entertaining this fellow, right? For president of the United States. And can you imagine a world, I'm switching gears here, folks. Can you imagine a world or even a country run by a second term President Trump and stuff like I'm going to read to you that would be happening? It would be condoned. It would be encouraged. And what I'm talking about here is DeSantis. This is the Tampa Bay Times article that just came out today that says DeSantis officials must stop threatening TV stations over abortion ads, judge rules. And there's the Surgeon General, Joseph Latipo of Florida. And so what's going on here? A federal judge ordered Governor Ron DeSantis' state health department to stop threatening television stations with criminal prosecutions if they kept running ads in favor of an abortion amendment on the ballot next month. In a sharply worded ruling on Thursday, U.S. Judge Mark Walker rebuked the DeSantis administration for trying to quash what he called constitutionally protected political speech. To keep it simple for the state of Florida, he said, it's the First Amendment, stupid, the judge wrote. The ruling puts a temporary halt on one of DeSantis's most brazen attempts to defeat Amendment 4, which would overturn the six-week abortion ban he signed into law. So they're 
they're out there using all the levers of their government. In this case, that that joke of a Surgeon General, Joseph Latipo, to threaten television stations not to run ads in favor of an abortion amendment. I mean, this if Trump would, would be elected, folks, this would be happening and probably condoned across the entire country. Stuff like this would be happening all over the place. The kind of thing that we would have to look forward to. So let's not forget this, folks. We've got Donald Trump. Can you believe the fact that he's going to be at a McDonald's somewhere starting tomorrow, somewhere in the country? I think it's Pennsylvania. They don't want to talk about where it is, right? Not that anybody's going to be there in the restaurant. I mean, it's going to be a staged little event where Donald Trump is working at the fryer. They've talked about it already. He's going to be working the French fry machine, the fryer, the deep fryer. And... What's interesting about this is it's supposed to be a public space, right? Well, Donald Trump can't even go anywhere when he gets out of his when he gets out of his SUV. There's a big tent that he gets into so nobody can see him, right? I mean, he's highly protected. He's afraid of, you know, obviously, you know, the obvious as well as maybe getting something thrown at him like eggs or God knows what. So he's he's working through cars into buildings by getting into tents and he's supposed to be working at a McDonald's. You've got to be kidding me. But here's what they said. Mr. President, I got a question for you. Uh, either today or tomorrow, you're going to McDonald's. You're going to be working the fryer. Are you going to wear the paper hat? <laughs> I'm going to do everything. I tell you what. You're going to do A it. friend of mine He's owns going to do it. McDonald's someplace. <laughs> oh, I'm going. Because she lied. You don't think she ever worked at McDonald's? I know she did. We checked it out. <laughs> Unless somebody comes up with something. We checked it out. They said she never worked here. She even picked the store. We went to the manager. The manager's been there forever. You remember her? No, she never worked here. They know. Okay. No, she so will you wear the paper hat? You want. And you know who else I'm talking about at the press? If I said I worked at McDonald's and mm-hmm. it turned out not to be true, <laughs> would this be would the be story the ever. front page of that stupid New York Times. A- so, folks, insanity here. I mean, it is true. She worked there, what, 25 years ago? And they went to a manager who's been there forever, right? He's been there forever, probably five years. I don't remember her working here. That's all we need. We got it on tape. No, this is insane. He's going to work at a McDonald's because he's trying to make the point that Kamala has never worked there. I mean, come on. My God. There's something not right with this guy, folks. <laughs> and I'm stating the obvious here. So since we ended with a little bit of insanity, let's have Jean Martin take this out. She's on TikTok, folks. I encourage you to watch her. She does a great job. She loves playing these old vintage organs. And I'm kind of a retro guy. Let's hear it, Jean. Take it away. McDonald's. Can you believe that? I'd love to be at that McDonald's and see him working behind the fryer. (laughs) What insanity. It's almost over. Hang in there, folks. November 5th, right? It's all going to be over. All the pain, all the anguish. Hang in there. Until next time.